Hi guys! Hello! Thank you Dog in the Post for having me again. We're here for a quick conversation about this shedding, right Thatcher? Look at this. Hi guys! We're gonna give it a couple minutes for people to join in. Hello! Hi! So this is Thatcher and today we're here to talk about the shedding. Why is the shedding? What is it? How we do it? Why we do it? And you know, like, I feel like this is a pretty common problem. Hi, Dougie Compost. <laughs> Thank you for having me again. It's a pleasure to be here. Me and Thatcher are ready. I also have Rogu. Rogu, come here. Come here, Rogu. Come here. Whoa. Whoa, look at this. Hello. Hi, guys. Okay, so, are you guys ready to talk about this shedding? So, just before we start, just so you know, if you have any questions, please ask. It's great to answer the questions live, and as well, I have a, a model to demonstrate, and okay, so let's go. Okay, so what is the shedding, and why do we do it? Hi, Nicole. <laughs> so, what is the shedding, and what do we do it? So, um... I like to categorize the hair, three types of hair. There's lots of types of hair, lots of types of dogs, but we're talking about overall, how do I categorize them? So there's the type of hair that is like human hair, that just keeps growing, 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 and never stops, okay? So think about a Shih Tzu, think about a Poodle, think about Afghan Hound, um, Bichon, you know, the hair just keeps growing, and you have to trim it. There is the type of coat that grow to a certain length, and as soon as it reaches a certain length, it falls off, and then a new one is already growing underneath, which is the case of pugs, bulldogs, beagles. It's very, uh, you know, shedding is a bit of a nightmare. Like, they lay on the couch, and when they get up, there's another beagle <laughs> on the couch. I know because I have a Frenchie, and that's the same thing. And there is uh, dogs that have a cycle of coat, okay? So, they have two types of coat, okay? During those three types of coat that I'm talking about, the hair that keeps growing and never stops, the hair that grows and falls off, and this type of coat, they can always be double too. You know, they can have the main coat and the second coat underneath. And all of those cases, you do need a sort, some sort of new shedding. Talking about the coats that have a cycle, okay? So for example, these guys, the double-coated dogs, which you know, are also found in German Shepherds, on Golden Retrievers, and uh, Shelties, their coat, um, especially Huskies, Pomeranians, and Shelties, they have a cycle. So during spring and fall, the shedding is much more intense because the dog's body is getting ready for a different season. So let's suppose if you have a Pom or a Sheltie, you're gonna notice about on the springtime, they shed a lot because they're losing their hair to keep their body cool on the summer. And back then, you know, on their back when they were wild, it was the time for mating. So uh, the dog needed to lose all the hair over here to allow, you know, the mount and everything. So uh, it's very common on those phases from spring and fall that they have a more intense, <laughs> look at that, shit. so good, a more intense shed. Okay, so then you need to really get onto brushing because it's gonna fall a lot of hair, especially if you have a husky, the more, um, Nordic dog there is, like Huskies, Malamutes, the shedding is crazy, okay? So let's go about some shedding techniques and why do we have to do it? So when the hair is fully grown, um, if you don't take it out and that hair is stuck on the skin for a long time, the dog is going to itch a lot. By itching, you can hurt their skin and start infections. They can have hot spots. So it's very important to keep up with the do it. What about Cocker Spaniel? It's the same thing, you need to keep brushing. You need to brush because Cocker Spaniels, not only they do have a double coat, they also map. So you need to keep up with your brushing, otherwise it won't, it won't last. Okay? I have two golden and they're leaving trails of hair everywhere right now. This is a perfectly time how to, oh yeah. <laughs> that, now it's the way to do it. Okay, so um, one thing that is important, okay? How to do it. First, I like to start brushing the dog 
and depending on the case, I like to bait the dog first. But in this case, for example, Thatcher, she did not have a bath yet today, but we're gonna start brushing her out because she does have a couple mats and we need to go over how to remove the mats and how to brush the dog properly and remove the undercoat, okay? Uh, on case of palms, you don't wanna remove so much undercoat, but it is still, you need to remove the dead coat. Um, on this guy's cases, and it's the same thing with a husky, same thing with uh, uh, Sheltie and German Shepherd. When the coat, for the most times, when the undercoat, they have two kinds, okay? So they have this very, I don't think it's gonna show, very thin coat, oh look, you can kind of see it. A very thin coat, and this is the one that falls off, okay? The main coat, when it reaches a certain length, is gonna stay on that length all the way to the cycle it's over. So it can stay in that same length for months, okay? So it's gonna grow all the way here, and it's gonna stay there for a long time. And that's why sometimes we, well, I mean, we never recommend you're shaving a dog like this because a lot of times the hair cannot grow the same or it takes a long time for the hair to grow to the normal stage because you can cut the hair while in the middle of their cycle and the hair is not gonna grow, so I'm okay. So it's important to respect their coat because this type of hair is, um, is like a uh, thermal protector, okay? They protect from the heat and from the coat. So the dog, it's not too hot. Like, he's gonna probably be hotter if you shave it, okay? So don't, don't shave these guys. Let's just keep up with the brushing and let's learn how to do it. Okay, so this is a slicker brush from the green line of Andy's. And always start lifting the hair and brushing through the skin, okay? What is important is that both in these guys, I don't think uh, purposely, okay, I don't wanna try to yank the hair out because on Pomeranians and Shelties, um, the, I believe that the prettiest part of the breed is when you have a big hair, you know? So you don't wanna purposely try to take all the hair out because you wanna keep the hair big. So, is it vital, okay, that you open up the coat and you can see the skin? And then you brush. And look, I only brush for two minutes and look how much hair I already took off of her. Look at this. Okay, if I didn't have brushed out and removed this hair, this would have fallen out at home, or worse, it would have fallen out from the skin and stayed stuck in between the two layers, and that would become a mat. Okay, so it's very important to upkeep taking all that hair out. Give me questions, tell me where you guys are from. Where you guys are from? I love to see, to speak with people that are different parts of the world, different parts of the US. Okay, so let's just keep going and brushing her all over. And when you open the hair, you can kind of see the, the, the hair like tangling close to the skin and that's the dangerous part. You need to make sure that it's completely brushed out. And by brushing out, you are already removing a lot of the undercoat. And that technique for the shedding is the same one for, hi from LA, um, is the same one that we use on long hair dogs. I suppose if you have uh, Laos Apsu. Can everybody hear me? Because there's somebody that can't hear me. Can everybody else hear me? Please let me know. Um, for example, if you have a Laos Apsu or a Shih Tzu, it's very important to upkeep with the brushing because they also have undercoat. Okay, it's not like they are like long hair dogs, they don't shed much, they don't have undercoat, they do have undercoat, okay? So you need to brush up. Okay, so I'm gonna go um, show you guys, I'm gonna keep brushing Tatra, but I also wanna show you guys some other tools that you can use for, thank you Nicole, audio's working. Um, from California at the moment, I only have a cat. Well, you can brush out your cat too, and you should, because cats also shed a lot, and it happens the same thing with these guys, if you don't brush out, the hair is going to fall out and stay stuck in between the layers of the coat, okay? So this is a slicker brush. See, look, I'm just brushing her out a little more and I took out a bunch more hair off her, okay? Now, there is these guys in case you face some terrible man. So there is the, just give me one second, this is the, the matting rake. And that, uh, one sec. Sorry, this is the, the matting tool 
and this is the dematic ring. Okay, so how does this work? These guys are actual blades. See, they're actually a knife that is on the end of the blade, and this guy too. So, very important. After you do it, don't take it out of your hands because you can hurt yourself. Also, be mindful of where you're using and how you're using it to make sure you're not using too close to the ear, that you're not, uh, if the dog has testicles, uh, if there's not neuter, to be careful on the back area. On the skin fold that they have right here, need to be careful too when you're using a sharp tool like this so you don't hurt them, okay? Now, if the dog has mats, Areas to pay attention on dogs with double coat like this. Always big attention behind the ears. They always form like those dreadlocks behind the ears. Or on the butt area, okay? So if the dog is matted in the butt area, for example, that your has a couple mats here, you can use the rake and you introduce, you put it, it's important to not uh, uh, use it in a way that the blade will touch the skin. So it's very actual simple. You just put the rake and then Remove it, okay? Don't pull the don't pull the hair out. So you're gonna pull the rake in and take it out, in and out. So slightly, these blades are gonna be like cutting the hair and opening the path of the mat because you know, it becomes like a blob. So you can open up the hair first, then you remove the rest of the brush, okay? Same thing with this guy over here. You can get the dematting tool. You can get behind the ears, where there's mats, right here, there's a big mat right here, what, that way, there we go. So, you can go little by little, I usually like to hold the hair, so I'm making sure it's not touching her skin, and then I take the mat out, okay? However, one thing to keep in mind, the ideal idea is not to be necessary to get to a point that you need to use a knife to cut the mat up, okay? Because you are cutting the hair a little. So if you do like a lot of volume on the dog, it, the idea is to not have to remove hair. The idea is to keep the hair there and only remove what is actually ready to fall out. And again, for who is joining in right now, the importance to this shadow dog is that, for example, double-coated dogs, if the hair falls out and it's stuck in between the layers of the hair, it will create a mat, okay? And for rat single-coated dogs, where, for example, pugs, French bulldogs, if the hair grows, as soon as it reaches the, the final growth, it's gonna fall out and another hair is gonna grow. And that's why beagles, pugs, Frenchies, English bulldogs shed a lot, because as soon as the hair grows, it falls out. But if you remove the hair, Soon enough, it's not going to pull out in your house and it's going to prevent the dogs from having hot spots and allergies because the skin is always going to be clear and can breathe, okay? So let's keep brushing this young lady. More questions? As soon as I'm just brushing her out, I'm going to show you guys some other demanding tools. The other thing is like, I'm putting my finger behind the hair, so I know I'm not pressuring the brush against her skin, okay? It's always good to be mindful that the tools that we use are sharp. Yeah, Cocker Spaniel does shed. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, it does shed. Um, the reality is, there is very few dogs that don't shed much. For example, Poodles don't shed, um, Maltese don't shed, because they don't have much of this undercoat. Now, cockers, for example, if you're taking care of them for show, they do have undercoat and you need to work a lot on their undercoat to make sure that, that they're not um, shedding and it's not too poofy, like what I mean, like too fluffy there. <laughs> okay, look at that. This is just from the back of her leg, okay? Look. Also, very important to have, to have, um, a comb, okay, a metal comb, it's vital when you're taking care of your dog at home. Plastic combs from, or hair, or wood combs don't work. You need to have a metal comb. This is an Andy's metal comb, okay? Very good, very sturdy. This is like, they actually last a very long time. I have this for like many, many, many. I actually bought my shop with this comb, and I still have it. It's, it lasts a long time. Uh, 
So yeah, about the Beagle, you really do need to keep up with the brushing because they will shed a lot. So you need to kind of like anticipate the shedding and remove the hair all at once. If you brush hair out really well once a week, it will be enough. How do you know when you're done brushing? You know it is a good question. You can kind of hear the noise. Let me see if I can show you guys the noise of the brushing. Areas that need to be brushed and areas that are already brushed. Can you hear this noise? Dick? Can you hear it? See, once the hair is done brushing, the noise is gone. Look. See? Look, let me show another area. Take, pay attention to the noise. See the noise? Now it disappears because it, it's not tangled anymore. Let me show another area. Can you hear the noise? Then it's gone. And this is great too when you're raking a dog, okay? So what is the next step when you're doing a shedding? So if you have a dog that is going through severe shedding and has, uh, you know, you can see the hair falling out because it's very normal, like huskies, again, German shepherds, just giving the biggest examples, doodles can shed a lot too. Like, um, when, because doodles are mixed, they're mixed between a poodle and a golden retriever or you know Labrador. You don't know exactly what kind of um, hair they're gonna have. So if they do get a hair that is more golden retriever, they're gonna shed quite a bit and you need to keep up with the hair because they mat like crazy. Yeah, the the noise it's it's us I teach my students, the groomers and the clients when they come to the shop to pay attention to the noise because once the hair is brushed out you don't hear it anymore. Um, okay, so this is, um, I forgot the name of this tool, <laughs> but I just checked to make sure I give you guys the name. Okay, so this is a flexible rake. So this is more for big dogs, okay? I don't use this as much for small dogs, and um, I don't use it as much because I don't do that many big dogs. But for big dogs, this is amazing because see how flexible it is to use it at home? So it kind of shapes around your body. And also, if you have like a husky or a German Shepherd that you need to use this, it's amazing. So what it does is all the hair that is already out of the skin, because see, there's no blades on it. It's just a flexible comb, but it's sturdy enough to pull the hair out. So you can literally just She's already brushed out, but look. Ta -da. See? So there's lots of ways that you can do it. Um, if you have a Pong or a Sheltie or any small dog like a, a Shiba, I would recommend doing most of it. Personally, I like to do it with the brush, okay? I think uh, it's um, a very good multi-purpose tool, but it's very important to take the hair out and whatever you need to make it easier. Remember, if you have mats, you can use a blade to pull the mat out or this one for small tangles, okay? Just remember, never pull the hair out with your fingers. Okay, now it's my favorite tools because that's what I use the most. Of course, I don't shed all my clients with a brush. Most of them, I actually use this rake, okay? So this line, it's actually being discontinued because they don't come in black anymore. They're gonna come in this color, which is green and white. And it's cuter too. Um, but this is the rake. And this has this fabulous tools that actually are amazing for any professional all over the world. And they are accessible to buy it, to use it at home, which is even better. Which is, see they have the variety with white teeth and they have it with small teeth. So you can use this in any double coated. You can use in wire coat. Do you always brush first before the bath or do you ever do the shedding in the tub? Well, I like to brush first before the bath to remove the mats because you cannot really clean the hair if the hair is matted. Like if you put um, shampoo on a mat, on a pelt, the shampoo is not gonna penetrate that pelt really well and it's not gonna rinse off really well either. So if you don't remove the mat first, that you don't have to just shed it, but you need to remove the mat. So if you don't remove the mat first, you're not going to be able to clean it well, and there's a risk that you're going to leave residue of product on the hair 
when when you go for the drying, you know, because if you're not de-shedding or brushing before the bath, um, and you put the dog straight in the tub, and then when you're drying, you might have residue of all these products that you use on the coat still. So I like to take the mat out first. I have a cheap plug mix and the super shed. What can I use to help with the shedding? All these tools that we're talking, and this video is going to be safe in the Doggy Tone Post later if you want to rewatch the video, are great for your dogs. Going back to the um, de shedding after the tub. For who? For somebody who has a force dryer at home or can use professional tools, it's very useful to take the mats out, wash the dog, and then force dryer, and then do the de shedding afterwards. But if you're doing your dog at home, real good. If you're doing your dog at home, it's essential to take the mats out first, and I would do the most of the shedding before the bath, and you can do the rest of it also while you're drying. But um, the shedding, the most important thing is not even about baiting and taking out the hair at once, is the upkeep. So we're talking about if you have a shedding dog, it, the idea is not to just try to do everything in one day. It's you need to keep up with the coat so it doesn't get to a point that you need to do. Um, in one day. You should shed your dog every week, okay? So every week, you should brush your dog out. Doesn't matter the breed, and you should de-shed it. Um, for example, Thatcher wouldn't have all this hair, see, that is already dead. I had zero effort to remove this hair. He already, he already died from the skin. It fell out, it was just stuck. If you brush it every week, you're not gonna remove this much coat. You're not gonna hear that loud noise when you're brushing the dog either, okay? So, yeah, I feel like it's important to do this procedure every single week. Especially if you have a dog with single coat, okay? I'm almost done with um, Thatcher, and I want to show you guys also a single coated dog, how much it sheds. Let me just brush her mane over here, because then we're almost done. Again, listen, look at the noise. Then the noise disappears. See? It's gone. All the hair already came out. See? Then again. When you're doing a dog that has um, long coat, like a Poodle or a Bichon or a Shih Tzu, I find it very important. Look, when you find a mat, look how loud is the noise. Um, when you find a, if you're doing a pudu, a bichon, I find it very important to brush out even more than once a week, probably twice a week. See, I can use my matting tool to take this little mat out. It's right behind the ear. If the mat is too close, like if you think that the water won't pass it through it, I would use a, a, a little knife to open the mat. Or your hands and open up the mat. And look at that. Ta -da! It's out. And see, no pain, no suffering. Okay. Raking. Okay. This, if you have a, a wire coated dog, if you have a wire fox terrier, a Jack Russell, a Parson Russell, a Border Terrier, a, any wire coated dog, Brussels, uh, Griffon, it's very important to de shed. If you have a um, Collie, a Shelter, look at this, look how much hair it takes it out. Okay, look at this, it's a lot. This is the best. The shedding tool that exists in the world, and I've been, I've been everywhere. I've been to Europe, I've been to America, Middle Eastern. I've seen a lot of tools for the shedding because it's a common problem of the shop, and I've never seen anything as good as the Andes Rakes for the shedding. This is like hands down best re undercoat removal to ever. Both of them, the thin coated, the thin uh, teeth one, the fine teeth, and the, the white teeth. They are like God's gift, honestly, and I'm not saying that it, it's really hands down. I have like eight of these in the shop, and like people fight if they can get a hold of it. <laughs> okay, um, and it's very good because you have both kinds. So if you have a dog that has a thin undercoat, 
you can go with the thin one. Or you can start with the white teeth one and then go to the, the, the fine tooth one. Look at that. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys and talk about a little single coated dogs. Okay, come on, Rogu. So this guy, his name is Rogu, and look at this, okay, he like literally, yeah, the, the shedding tool from Andes, this guys, and they, they're changing the model, I told you guys, right, so this is the old version of them, they were black, now they're coming on the white and green. Alright, so, with these guys. Don't do this at home. Don't remove the hair with your hands because you can't hurt yourself. And I do it all the time. <laughs> is the large shedding tool available from Andy's now? The small one is available, but the large one has been on back order. I believe there's somebody from Andy's grooming here that can answer this question for you. I think so. I think that all the green tools are coming up available right now. So the Ferminator, it's almost a stripping knife. I don't find it half as effective as this, honestly. If you're wanting something like a Ferminator, you need to have these guys, and you will see that it's a game changer compared to it, in my opinion, okay? I do have Ferminators, but as soon as they release these guys, they're on the drawer, honestly. Okay, so how do I, um, that I have a short hair dog, that sheds like crazy. What do I have to do? Touch her. Here's a kid, baby. She's upset that she's not on the table. <laughs> uh, it's very important to brush your dog, and it's very important. No, beagles are just like uh, like Frenchies. Look, they're here. Once they reach a certain length, they reach the final stage of the growth. They fall off. So they're falling out constantly. Touch her. She's here. So they're falling out constantly. And that's why everybody who has beagles or, or single coated dogs think like the shedding is a nightmare because it's every day. You need to do it every day, you need to do it all the time. You need to keep up with it because it will, as soon as it grows, it will fall out. It's not like a palm that the hair will grow and stay that way. And there's like more intense seasons of the shedding. The single coated dogs, as soon as it grows, falls out. Yeah, the Andy's the shedding tool is much better, exactly. These guys are amazing. So, again, to de shed a beagle or a Frenchie, I like to give them a good bath and good conditioning, okay? Conditioners are essential to, uh, to keep up with all this hair that falls out, okay? Also, brush your dog, and I would recommend brushing against the grain first, because that would help to pull out from the skin the hair that is almost falling out, okay? It's almost ready to pop, fall out, so brush it against the grain first, very well, then tie your dog, brush it, brush it, brush it, brush it, then turn your brush around, then go with the grain. Look, look how much hair already. With the brush, you don't have to use strength, okay? Because the brush does the job. All you have to do is slide the brush to the dog's body on a short-coated dog, do it against the grain, then with the grain. So first, I go in the opposite direction of the hair grows, like that. The whole body, even on the parts that the hair is short, they like it because it scratches them too. Hey baby, then you go with the gray. And after you're done de shedding any dog, it's important to revisit the whole thing with this liquor brush afterwards. Especially if you use a rake. A rake is gonna pull out the hair from the Rogu is pretty much the shed of the look. See, just a little that I use. The fine 
Let me see if I can show you. It's actually working. Look at that. The hair just come out. I was gonna say, after you use the rake, especially on double coated dogs, the rake has a blade, see? These rakes have a little blade underneath. So they're gonna pull the hair out. But you need to make sure you also brush it so that you remove all the hair out of the dog and you don't leave any dead hair in between, okay? So if you have any, again, wire-coated dog, double-coated dog, single-coated dog, these guys are the best uh, undercoat removal thing ever, followed by a brush. I like to keep it simple, I like rigs, I like the brush, but you know, you also have the, the flexible rake, and you have, you know, the dematting tool if you need it, the dematting rake, and the dematting tool. Okay? All right, good. Cool. So remember, de-shed your dog every week. Yes, for a Belgian Manuelois, it, it's the exact same. The exact same. You can use a rake and you can use a slicker brush. They're not going to get mad at if you have a Manuelois. But the, the slicker brush and the, the shedding rakes are essential. Uh, yep, every week. And no, it doesn't take much, especially when you have a short haired dog. See, it's about 10 minutes, you know? You came back from your, your walk and you're taking the harness off. Just grab the brush on your laundry room or, or on the yard. Even just brush the dog well against the grain, then brush it with the grain. If you do it every week, it's not a lot of work at all. I like to brush out the hair dry, um, however, we're talking about de -shedding. The best time to de -shed, of course, is in the bath, after you use a good shampoo and a good conditioner. Conditioner for de -shedding is essential, okay? Um, because it lubricates the hair when you're pulling it out. Now, um, there, sometimes you're not gonna give your dog a bath every week. It's great to brush the hair wet, but you're not gonna do give your dog a bath sometimes every week or you don't have, if you want to do it twice a week, you can't do it all the time. So especially if you have a double coated dog, I would even recommend you washing them every week, especially if you're doing it at home because you know, you sometimes you are not sure that you dry the dog to the skin completely. So we're talking about the shedding, you need to do it every week. When you're baiting your dog, also follow up with the shedding because then you're like, you know, scoring. See, uh, Andy just posted a comment with the info for all the tools. If you guys need it, you can just follow up on the website. All the tools are there. Please give me more questions. I love talking to you guys. Questions? Questions? Let me just brush through a little more. It's like cover in here now. Um, you guys have the little nail grinder. This is great for at home and on the go if you need it. Um, so you can take this out. See, it's very safe. You just put the dog nail right here in the little opening. Roby doesn't like it very much. And you can just... It's okay, Roby. There we go. Um, one thing that is essential, okay, is to, what about a Labrador? And the same thing. Same thing as a Malinois. You, they shed like crazy. You need to keep up with the Labrador. Use the brush. Like, remember the technique against the grain, with the grain. Grab the, and these rigs, the white and the tin, and do it as most as you can, okay? Also, um, something that is important. Get your dog used to the grooming. Okay? Is it possible to de-shed too much? Um, that's a good question, but no. If remember that technique that I told you guys about the noise, that when the noise is over, the hair is not coming out anymore, that's pretty much accurate. So it's very hard to de-shed very much. What can happen is uh, you can use too much pressure on the brush, and that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to do it strong, okay? Because that can scratch the dog's skin. So what you want to do is you want to brush the dog the most as you can, but without scratching them. But the more you brush, the better. Because the hair that is not coming out, that is stuck in the skin, it's not going to come out. Okay? Also, what I was... Um, 
going across. It's important to get your dog used to the grooming. See, so the earlier the better. Even if they don't have the shots yet and you can't take them to a grooming place, start brushing them at home very early because this is part of their life. They're going to have to deal with this for 15, 16, 20 years sometimes. And the more comfortable they get is the, is the best for them, best for you guys because you have to do, deal with it at home too. And for the groomer. And if you find somebody that your dogs are very comfortable with, just keep up with them because um, it's almost like a relationship. It's, it's important for the dog to feel very comfortable where they are. So if you start shedding them at home and start them getting used to the brush at home, they quite enjoy it because they like uh, the mom that moment with you and it becomes something um, enjoyable for them. For example, to get the nails done, I have a lot of questions of how I do to get my dog so comfortable to get nails done, you know? Most of the Frenchies want to bite or crying when they're doing it, and my dogs are, are comfortable. Um, first of all, when they're at home, not just at the shop, at home, grab an electric toothbrush, or if you have the Andes grinder, turn it on, see, you can hear the noise and the little vibration, and just massage them a bit, okay? Because this helps them get used to the vibration and the noise without being something that they're scared of or somebody that they don't, they don't know. So this is very important. Just massage them, get them used to it. Then, once the massaging is good, because think about, you know when you're cutting your hair and the, the barber go the clipper very close to your ear? If you put a tool that vibrates close to your ear, the noise is, very, is quite loud. You know, and dogs, they have a more sensitive hearing even. So it's important for them to get used to that, that noise and that feeling in a calm environment where they feel safe, which is at home. After you're done with the body massage, you can go and do paw massages. This is, might be the most tricky, but see, they learn to like it. As Soon as they're used to the vibration on their paws, the noise, they end up liking to do their nails or they're very comfortable getting their nails done because they know the noise is not scary, it's not gonna hurt. So this is very important. Um, the earlier the better. If you get your puppy while they're sleeping, you're very calm or you're rubbing their belly, grab a electric toothbrush if you don't have that and this um, nail grinder, which I recommend because it's a very uh, handy tool to have at home. So you can do your dog, the dog nails yourself. See, they have a very cool opening and just make sure you are getting them used to it at home too. And de shed them at home too, you know? You don't need to wait till they're like uh, shedding masks. They're looking like the, <laughs> the fall season itself to, to start de shedding them. Because if you start doing constantly, you're never gonna, it's never gonna be hard if you do it all the time, okay? Um, so that's, a, that's the, also a good tip to get your dog used to the grooming because this, this is very important. Brushing them at home, de-shedding them weekly. It's vital for their skin, okay? They, it helps them not having uh, scabs, allergies, uh, hot spots, because if their hair, uh, a lot of breeds, for example, wire dogs, if you don't pull their hair out, they're gonna itch, okay? So just do them, them a favor, do yourself a favor, so your couch doesn't look like a beagle, <laughs> or your couch doesn't look like a Frenchie. Um, just de shed them every week. As soon as you get them home, just brush them out. Remember, against the grain first, with the grain. Then make sure if you have a Labradoodle, Golden Doodle, a Labrador, any dog that sheds, Alaskan Malamute, Siberian Husky, especially, um, German Shepherd, Malinois, Great Danes, all those dogs lose a lot of hair. Make sure you get the Andes Rakes because these guys are bomb.com when it comes down to removing coat and make sure you're brushing them really well. If you run into mats, if you have a dog that gets matted, you can open the mats with this blade, remember, the end is rake. Don't clean it with your hands, don't hurt yourself. Grab a comb or even a brush, look, and take the hair out, okay? Remember, this is a knife. Uh, also be very mindful when you're using around the ears or the skin folds because you don't want to hurt your dog when you're trying to take the mats out, okay? So there is those guys. They are knives that you can use to, whoop, Rogu, he's like, I gotta get that hair on the floor. Um, those guys are very nice when you need to remove. 
the mat and always follow up with a metal comb and a brush. Okay, you want to make sure that that, mat, that coat is removed from the skin and taken out of the dogs. All right. Thank you very much, you guys, for watching. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Please comment below. Share this video. If you have a friend that has a shedding dog or that is dealing with shedding issues, um, please share it. Tag your friend. Thank you very much, Doggy Hoopos. What is the question? I have a Great Dane. His nails are so large. He fights having them cut. What do you recommend to use on his nails? Well, start with the training of the vibration, okay? You can buy the Andes um, at home. This is great for at home use. Nail, nail uh, grinder. And see, it's very small. Doesn't vibrate very much, it's not loud. So first, turn it on or rewatch this video. Rub on your Great Dane so he can get used to that vibration. And gradually starts going to his legs when he's calm, comfortable with you at home. And little by little, you start touching his paws. See, this is, is shut down, it's not working. It's just so they can get used to the vibration and the noise, and then start touching the paws. Not cutting the nails, don't do it in the same day. Do that one day, next day, do it again. Third day, do it again. In about a week or two, he's gonna be used to this vibration on the nails. Then little by little, in the same way, when he's calm, you do a little bit of the nails. He behaved well, give him a treat, give him his favorite thing, give him his toy. So they assimilate that as a good experience. And there's nothing better than that because then he's gonna be like, oh, doing the nails is cool, you know? Um, so yeah. Yep, yep. See, uh, Andy's is posting the links where you guys can get all these items. Um, thank you very much, Andy's, for having me as an educator and allowing me this space to talk to people, which is so nice. Thank you, Doggington Post, for this opportunity. You guys are awesome. Thanks everybody that is watching, and I see you guys next time.